The United States is closely watching a Russian military vessel that had been sailing near a U.S. nuclear missile submarine base. Defense officials say the ship is gathering intelligence against the U.S. nuclear missile submarines. U.S. relations with Russia seem to be getting frostier by the day and in an unprecedented move. The Russian military says it now plans to send strategic bombers on regular patrol in America's backyard. Russian bomber patrols over the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico would be very significant, U.S. military officers say, something the Russians have never done before. Something the Russians have never done before. A senior defense official confirms to Fox News that five Chinese Navy ships have been spotted in the Bering Sea off the Alaskan coast. In a few hours, China will also conduct a massive military parade in Beijing, featuring 10,000 soldiers, hundreds of aircraft, and weapons not previously shown in public. Well, Vladimir Putin wants war, apparently. NATO jets from four countries intercepted Russian nuclear planes, intercepted Russian nuclear planes right outside of Europe. Fears of a major confrontation between Vladimir Putin and the West were heightened after it was revealed that NATO jets from four countries were scrambled to intercept Russian bombers scouting off of Europe's coast. They're two of America's biggest antagonists. And tonight, there's new concern over Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin teaming up, creating an ominous alliance against the United States. A Russian spy ship capable of cutting cables and tapping into other underwater sensors passed within 300 miles of the U.S. ballistic missile submarine base at Kings Bay, home to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class fleet, whose boomers are capable of firing multiple warheads that can strike up to 240 cities at once are capable of firing multiple warheads that can strike up to 240 cities at once they can strike up to 240 cities at once The biggest danger we face is World War III. We have seen our government and the mainstream news demonizing Russia. They want to build this up. Here's a special report. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation. Do you realize now what you've done? I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. We'll stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. In the last year, I have issued more than 10 emergency alerts dealing with the deteriorating situation, not just in the Middle East with Syria, but also with Ukraine bordering Russia. I've been following the statements coming out of the Kremlin and out of the Russian Defense Ministry. I've been following the statements out of the Pentagon and out of our Congress. I have been following the statements of top geopolitical analysts, journalists, and others. Vladimir Putin has press conferences and begs the Western media to inform the public about the fact that countries are being destabilized around Russia and weapons and troops are being moved in by NATO against Russia's border. It's only you that they tell these fables and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. Uh, I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. And then George Soros goes on TV and brags that he was involved with the $5 billion that the State Department admits they sent to overthrow an elected government of Ukraine. First on Ukraine, one of the things that many people recognized about you was that you, during the revolutions of 1989, funded a lot of dissident activities, civil society groups in Eastern Europe, in Poland, the Czech Republic. Are you doing similar things in Ukraine? Well, I set up a foundation in Ukraine before Ukraine became independent of uh, Russia. Um, and the foundation has been uh, functioning ever since. And it played a, 
an important part in events now. Russia is not offensively threatening our country. But our elites are preparing for a war with Russia. And then they want to go after their political opposition here in the United States claiming we're Russian agents. And now, one of the most important developments in the five-year tragic saga of the Western-backed Al-Qaeda started civil war in Syria took place today. Russia came out in the Moscow Times, it was in Yahoo News, Associated Press, Daily Caller, you name it, stating any aircraft entering Syrian airspace that's not authorized by the Syrian government and the Russians who were invited in will be shot down. What does that signify in plain English? The Russians are saying there is a no-fly zone over Syria. You enter this country, we're going to take you out. Then, the Russian military, through their embassy in the U.S., put out a tweet with an image of the famously deceptive White House press secretary with missiles aiming at him, saying, look, we're not going to allow your country to continue to back terrorists in Syria, which is what they've been doing. The bravada, the naked, insane, wild-eyed chutzpah of the elites running our country is evident in the fact that just a week ago, announcements were made by the State Department that terrorists would attack Russia. Jihadis, the same one the West runs, if Russia didn't back off in Syria. Extremist groups will continue to exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are there in Syria to expand their operations, um, which will include, no, no question, uh, attacks against uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities. The power structure hopes that the American people and the people of the West are not up to speed on geopolitical developments. They're counting on that. But let me break down the facts, and these are undisputed. Syria is a proxy war between Russia and the globalists that have hijacked the West. The West is using Al-Qaeda, Sunni, Wahhabist mercenaries, that's Islamic State, to invade the multi-religious, tolerant nation of Syria to destabilize it and overthrow it as a gateway into Turkey and the rest of Europe for Islamic colonization. Four years ago, our military basically engaged in a soft coup, which Cy Hirsch reported on four years after we broke it, confirming it, but we have the sources, and said, we're not going to back Al-Qaeda in the overthrow of this country. This is pure evil. So let's look who Obama has installed to complete Hillary's strategy in the Middle East. General Joseph Dumford, two weeks ago, saying, I'm ready to launch a no-fly zone over Syria, but if we do that, we'll have to shoot down Russian aircraft, and that will start a war with Russia and Syria. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. Here's what the Army Chief of Staff, General Mark Milley, had to say just two days ago. I want to be clear to those who try to oppose the United States. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. I want to be clear to those around the world who want to destroy our way of life and that of our allies and friends. The United States military, despite all our challenges, Despite our op tempo, despite everything we've been doing, we'll stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. We'll beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. He says, get ready for a war as big as World War II. What comes after two? Three. So in summation, it's very important, not just for our viewers and listeners to listen and listen very, very clearly and research what we've laid out here today, these facts that are irrefutable. It's important for our political class, who is completely disconnected from reality, to listen to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and others that are explaining to you that this is World War III you're asking for. The United States is closely watching a Russian military vessel that had been sailing near a U.S. nuclear missile submarine base. Defense officials say the ship is gathering intelligence against the U.S. nuclear missile submarines. How concerned was the Pentagon about this Russian ship? 
Well, this is uh, something that uh, navies from all countries do all the time, which is uh, spy on each other's navies. What set this apart was that it was a, a brand new uh, Russian uh, research vessel, which made this long, slow transit uh, down the east coast of the uh, United States, and it's now uh, completed its uh, transit, and it's off the coast of Cuba, where it's expected to make a uh, port call. This research vessel had underwater submersibles with it, uh, which would be capable of going down to the ocean floor and mapping out the undersea communications cables that connect the U.S. to its, its forces uh, in Europe and, and uh, around the world. So interestingly, here's mm -hmm. President Obama in Alaska, and yeah. in the Bering Sea, you had Chinese warships there for the very first time, and this massive parade in China where they're showing off all of their military might. They write that the Royal Air Force jets joined aircraft from Norway, France, and Spain to meet two bombers that are capable of carrying nuclear weapons that had entered European airspace near Scotland last month. The incident involved two Tu-60 bombers known uh, by NATO as Blackjack bombers. It took place at the end of September, on September 22nd, but now has only come to light uh, during the, uh, the tensions currently. Apparently, Norwegian F-16 fighters were the first to meet the bombers to escort it out of European airspace after the Russian planes were detected heading towards Scotland. Then British typhoons were deployed from the Royal Air Force uh, to join the mission off the coast of Shetland. Then they state, as the bombers skirted the west coast of Ireland, French jets came into the fold, and then finally Spanish F-18s were deployed as the Russian warplanes were headed towards Spanish airspace. I've never seen the chief of staff of the Army look this grave. They're being given a position of World War III, and I understand why they're trying to put a strong face on America, but there's no winning a war where the Russians can destroy the planet conservatively 100 times, and we can destroy it 300 times. There's no winner. The only way to win this game is not to play. U.S. relations with Russia seem to be getting frostier by the day, and in an unprecedented move, the Russian military says it now plans to send strategic bombers on regular patrol in America's backyard. Russian bomber patrols over the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico would be very significant, U.S. military officers say, something the Russians have never done before. During the Cold War, Soviet aircraft flew reconnaissance missions there, but never bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Once in 2008 and again in 2013, blackjack bombers flew to Nicaragua and Venezuela, but those were window dressing for visits by high-level Russian delegations. When the Russian defense minister announced the bomber patrols earlier this week, he linked them specifically to tensions over Ukraine, in effect saying, if you meddle in our backyard, we'll meddle in yours. U.S. military officers say the patrols would not pose a military threat, since the bombers and their refueling tankers could be tracked as they came down through Greenland and Iceland and across the Atlantic, leaving plenty of time to scramble jet fighters. A real attack by Russian bombers would most likely come over the North Pole, the shortest distance between the two countries. These new patrols are an in-your-face way of saying, we're a global power and we're not going to let you push us around. Top NATO commander says Russian tanks and troops are moving into eastern Ukraine. Moscow denies those claims. The development comes after Russia announced new Air Force training exercises near United States borders. David Martin is at the Pentagon with the military's response. David, good morning. Good morning. When Russia's defense minister announced plans for these new long-range bomber patrols, he linked them specifically to tensions over Ukraine, telling the U.S. in effect, if you meddle in our backyard, we'll meddle in yours. The announcement of the new patrols comes just as President Obama and Russia's Putin are set to attend the same summit this weekend in Australia. Both men surely know having bombers circle around to the south of the U.S. doesn't make much military sense. The bombers and their refueling tankers could be tracked all the way across the Atlantic, leaving plenty of time to scramble interceptor jets. Benjamin Friedman is a research fellow at the Cato Institute. Politically, it's important. It shows that Russia is trying to sort of show its relevance and poke its finger in the U.S. eye and say, look, we're still here, we still matter, we're something you have to deal with and plan for. And there's one final point I want to 
get to. The Russians have supersonic missiles, their S-300s, and even more advanced, that are Mach 3 to Mach 6, and that nothing can shoot down. And they're aimed at our aircraft carriers. And I saw Congress two weeks ago, and the chairman was there. They're saying, well, we're just going to shoot down their planes with missiles, so it won't matter. None of our people will be lost. And the general went, yeah, but then the Russians are going to respond, you know, in the full hour-long clip. And Congress kept saying, yeah, but we're just going to hit them with missiles. Well, Russia asked for it. No, they didn't. They're there kicking al-Qaeda and ISIS out. They're there doing what we should be doing. Our elite are so corrupt, they make Russia look good. And that's shameful. America needs to wake up out of its coma before you finally wake up because you live outside a major city and weren't killed immediately by the thousand megaton hydrogen bomb that goes off at a thousand feet airburst above your house. Everyone in history thinks they're immune from wars till it happens. They're two of America's biggest antagonists. And tonight, there's new concern over Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin teaming up, creating an ominous alliance against the United States. The Russians say they're negotiating with North Korea to hold joint military exercises. Russia and North Korea had strong bonds against the U.S. during the Cold War and afterward when Kim's father visited Putin in Moscow. How would this new axis of antagonism threaten the U.S.? Russia has lots of intelligence. For uh, decades, the, the Chinese military has relied on quantity rather than quality. It has a massive, massive army. Uh, but it is trying to modernize itself and starting to build things like uh, aircraft carriers and stealth jet fighters, uh, which are the kind of technology that has made the U.S. military number one in the world. And if it's going to do that, it has to uh, uh, take this outmoded army and make it much smaller. And that 300,000 cut is going to come mainly from the army and it's going to save a lot of money that can then be invested in more modern technology and the purpose of this more modern technology is to build a force that is capable of keeping the united states further and further away from the chinese mainland if it were ever to to come to war russian president vladimir putin watched from the stands russia and china recently finished rare joint naval exercises in the sea of japan their navies have been working together now for a couple of years. we got to remember, going back to 2013 in the crisis in the Syrian civil war, uh, Chinese and Russian vessels sorted together in the eastern Mediterranean as a warning to the United States and NATO. Meanwhile, off the coast of the U.S. state of Georgia, a Russian spy ship capable of cutting cables and tapping into other underwater sensors passed within 300 miles of the U.S. ballistic missile submarine base at Kings Bay, home to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class fleet, whose boomers are capable of firing multiple warheads that can strike up to 240 cities at once. Are capable of firing multiple warheads that can strike up to 240 cities at once. Of course, more Russian planes and ships could increase the chances of a potential run-in with our own military. What if there's a mistake? This week, a European watchdog group reported a dramatic rise of encounters between Russian forces and NATO forces. It reported dozens of incidents, three of which it claims carried a high probability of triggering a direct confrontation. One of them, a reported near crash between a Russian spy plane and a passenger jet. So none of this is routine stuff. And Vladimir Putin is in uncharted territory. And there was also that recent hunt for the suspected Russian submarine off the coast of Sweden that got the U.S. military's attention. Forty incidents involving the Russian military coming into near confrontation with NATO members since Putin's invasion of Crimea. The Pentagon reacted to the announcement from Russia's defense minister today that Russia now plans to extend its long-range bear bomber flights to the Caribbean. What's he doing? I think what he's trying to do is he's saying to the rest of the world, look, I can do whatever I want. The United States can't stop me. I've got a new friendship with the Chinese. They're going to finance what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab what I want. And that's clearly um, Georgia, Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine. You know, it's just it's awful. Zach, this is Crystal Palace. Sink Norad has declared DEFCON 3. Scramble all alert aircraft. I repeat, scramble all alert aircraft. The Whopper spends all its time thinking about World War III. Target selection complete. Time on target sequence complete. 22 Typhoon-class submarines departing Petropavlovsk. 
Turning southbound at North Cap, bearing 095 degrees. Radar reports two unknown tracks are penetrating the Alaskan air defense zone. From the front lines of the information war. Flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Are you prepared to destroy the enemy? You bet! Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. We'll keep control, but we'll keep it here at the top where it belongs. Three, two, one. Impact. Shall we play a game? How about global thermal nuclear war? All units confirm weapons targeted and ready, awaiting launch codes. We are in a launch mode. Do you really believe that the enemy would attack without provocation?